Hello everybody, this video is on calculation of pH after mixing acid and base solutions. This is a very common type of exam question where they ask you to calculate the pH of a final mixture or solution when an acid is added to a base. It is important to understand that when you're mixing an acid or base, the pH of the final solution really just depends on what is in excess. If you're adding acid that is in excess, which means you have more acid compared to base, then the pH of the final solution will be determined by the leftover acid, which means that it will be acidic. So at standard conditions, this will correspond to a pH of less than 7. Conversely, if you've added more base to the acid, so when the base is in excess, then the pH of the final solution will then be basic, so the pH would be greater than 7. So really the objective of approaching these acid and base mixing questions is to first determine whether you have an acid or base in excess. So keep this general principle in mind when we go through the examples of this video. Example 1, we have 30 ml of 0.1 mol per litre of sodium hydroxide and this is added to 50 ml of 0.8 mol per litre of hydrochloric acid solution. Calculate the pH of the final solution. So let's write a chemical equation to first understand the reaction. So the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide produces sodium chloride, which is a salt, and also water. Since we're using a monoprotic acid and group 1 metal hydroxide, the ratio here will be simply 1 to 1. The ratio between the two reactants is important to consider, and I'll come back to this in a moment. As I said before, to calculate the final pH, it is important to determine whether your acid or base is in excess. To determine this, we need to first calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide and the number of moles of hydrochloric acid. Let's start with the moles of sodium hydroxide. Since we're given the concentration and volume, this is given by its concentration multiplied by its volume in liters. This will give me 0.003 moles. I can do the same thing for the number of moles of hydrochloric acid, which would be 0.80 moles per litre times by 0.05 litres. This is equal to 0.04 moles. Since sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid react in a 1 to 1 stoichiometric ratio, 0.04 moles of hydrochloric acid would then require the same number of moles of sodium hydroxide to react. However, as you are aware, we don't have this many moles of sodium hydroxide. In fact, we have way fewer moles, 0.003, compared to 0.04. This means the sodium hydroxide in my question is my limiting reagent, and that makes my hydrochloric acid what's in excess. Now, if you remember from the beginning of the question, we are calculating the number of moles to determine whether the acid or base is in excess. So in this case, my hydrochloric acid is the reactant that is in excess. So that will make the pH of a final solution less than 7. It will make it acidic. Now to find the exact pH, so how acidic this final solution will be, I need to find out how many moles of hydrochloric acid is actually in excess. Because if I have more hydrochloric acid in excess, that would obviously make my solution more acidic and therefore have a lower pH. To find the moles of hydrochloric acid in excess, I will need to take the initial amount, which is 0.04 before the reaction, minus the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that actually gets neutralized by the sodium hydroxide. We can find this number by considering the number of moles of the sodium hydroxide. We know the sodium hydroxide is a limiting reagent, which means all of the 0.003 moles of sodium hydroxide would be neutralized. So how many moles of hydrochloric acid will be reacted then? Well, because they're in a 1 to 1 ratio, it will also require 0.003 moles of hydrochloric acid. By finding the difference, I can then calculate the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that remains. This will be 0.037. Before we can calculate the pH, we need to find the concentration of the hydrogen ions because pH is equal to the minus log of hydrogen ion concentration. Since hydrochloric acid is a strong monoprotic acid, it will completely dissociate to give you hydrogen and chloride ions. 
So the number of moles of hydrogen ion that remains behind will be also equal to 0 0.037 moles. This is important to consider because I can now calculate the hydrogen ion concentration by dividing the number of moles by the final volume. When you're mixing the acid and base solution together, the final volume will be the combination of the 30 ml and the 50 ml. So here we'll put 0 0.08 liters, which is 80 milliliters. This gives me a concentration of 0 0.4625 moles per liter. And now for my final step, the pH is equal to the minus log of 0 0.4625, which is equal to 0 0.33. And since the fewest number of significant figures are given in the concentrations, which is 2, I'll leave the final pH here as two decimal places. All right, let's look at an example 2. 5 grams of solid sodium hydroxide is added to 100 milliliters of a 1 mole per liter solution of hydrochloric acid. Calculate the pH of the final solution. So again, we should start the question by writing a chemical equation to represent the reaction between the acid and base. In this case, it will give you sodium chloride again, and also water. As discussed in the previous question, the ratio of this reaction is 1 to 1, and it is important to consider this as we need it to determine what is in excess later on. The difference between this question and the previous example is that the sodium hydroxide is added as a solid rather than a solution. This affects the way we'll calculate the number of moles of the sodium hydroxide by dividing the number of grams by the molar mass of the compound. So sodium is 22.99, the molar mass of oxygen is 16.00, and then the molar mass of hydrogen is 1.008. This gives me a number of moles of 0 0.125. I can then also find the moles of hydrochloric acid by multiplying its concentration by the volume. This gives me a mole of 0 0.1 moles. We are calculating the number of moles because our objective with this type of question is to determine whether the acid or base is in excess. Because the sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid are reacting in a 1 to 1 ratio, you can directly compare the number of moles in order to determine which one is in excess. In this case, we have more moles of sodium hydroxide compared to the hydrochloric acid, which tells me that the base is what's in excess. This also means the final pH of the solution will be basic, which is greater than 7. To find the exact pH, I need to first determine how many moles of sodium hydroxide is actually in excess. This will mean that I need to take my initial number of moles, subtract the number of moles that it reacts. Since 0.1 moles of hydrochloric acid, which is a limited reagent, fully gets neutralized by the sodium hydroxide, this also means I'll use up the same number of moles of sodium hydroxide. Again, this is because of a 1 to 1 stoichiometric ratio. So to find the excess amount of sodium hydroxide, I simply subtract 0 0.125 by 0 0.1, which gives me 0 0.025 moles of sodium hydroxide remaining. Since sodium hydroxide is a strong base, which dissociates completely to form sodium and hydroxide ions, I can also say that the amount of hydroxide ions remaining is 0.025 moles. For a question where the base is in excess, before we can calculate the pH of the solution, we need to first find the pOH. Now the pOH is given by the minus log of the hydroxide concentration, so we need to first find the hydroxide concentration. And this is given by the number of moles of hydroxide remaining divided by the volume of the final solution. For this question, since we've added solid form of sodium hydroxide to a solution of hydrochloric acid, the final volume of the mixture will remain as 100 milliliters. So here we'll divide by 0 0.1 liter, which gives me a concentration of 0 0.25 mole per liter. Now I can find the pOH which is minus log of 0 0.25, and this is 0 0.602. So the pH is equal to 14 minus the pOH, and this gives me a pH of 13.398. The fewest number of significant figures of the numbers given by the question is 3 in 1.00 and 5.00. I'll leave my final pH answer here in three decimal places.
All right, let's look at example three. Two grams of solid potassium hydroxide is added to 100 milliliters of 0.150 moles of sulfuric acid solution. Calculate the pH of the final solution. Again, the first step is to always write a balanced chemical equation. So we have potassium hydroxide plus sulfuric acid, which has a formula of H2SO4. And this gives us salt of potassium sulfate, which is a formula of K2SO4 plus water. Now, in this case, it's not as simple as a one-to-one -one ratio, as we need to multiply the potassium hydroxide by two to balance the potassium. By doing this, we need to also add a two in from the water to balance the number of hydrogens as well as oxygen. And as you can see, this means the ratio of reaction between the potassium hydroxide and sulfuric acid is no longer one-to-one, -one, it's two-to-one. Regardless of the ratio, the general principle of approaching this question is still to determine whether you have the acid in excess or the base in excess. And this is first done by calculating the number of moles of each reactant. So let's start with the moles of potassium hydroxide, which will be two grams divided by the molar mass of potassium hydroxide. So potassium is 39.1 plus oxygen and plus the molar mass of hydrogen. This gives me 0.0356 moles. The moles of sulfuric acid is equal to its concentration multiplied by the volume, which is 0.0150 moles. When the stoichiometric ratio between the two reactants is not one-to-one, -one, you cannot compare the number of moles directly to determine what is in excess. Instead, you need to consider one of the moles as well as the ratio to determine how many moles of the other reactant is needed. Let's consider the moles of sulfuric acid and think about how many moles of potassium hydroxide is needed for the reaction. The ratio between sulfuric acid to potassium hydroxide is one to two, which means we need twice the number of potassium hydroxide. So we times this by two and we get 0.0300 moles of potassium hydroxide that will react. Once you find this number, have a think about, do you have more or less moles than what's required? So if we compare 0.0356 to 0.0300, you can see that we have a bit more moles of potassium hydroxide than what's required to neutralize the sulfuric acid. This tells me the potassium hydroxide is in excess. And of course, the sulfuric acid is a limiting reagent. Now that we've determined the potassium hydroxide is in excess, we would expect the final pH of the solution to be basic. So have a pH of greater than seven. So then we need to find the moles of potassium hydroxide that is actually in excess. By finding the difference between the initial number of moles of potassium hydroxide and the amount that reacts. So what do we say? We said that 0.03 moles will react which gives you a remaining amount of 0.0056 moles. And now be aware that this number here is a round and answer. Make sure you have saved the actual number in a calculator and use that for subsequent steps of your working out. So the moles of hydroxide is equal to 0.0056 moles as well, because the potassium hydroxide is a strong base, just like sodium hydroxide. As we said before, when you have the base in excess, before you can calculate the pH, you must first find the pOH. So the hydroxide concentration is equal to 0.0056 divided by the volume of the final solution, which would be 0.1 liter. So this is equal to 0.056 moles per liter. And then therefore the pOH is given by minus log of 0.056, which is 1.248. So therefore the pH is equal to 14 minus 1.248, which is equal to 12.752. Since the fewest number of significant figures in this question is three, I'll leave this answer as three decimal places. This concludes the video on calculation of pH after mixing acid and bases.